Hey everyone, this week we are talking about databases which hold a lot of data that you're then able to access using your application. So, you know, we'd already talked about how to use files in order to input and output data, but databases make it even easier for you to work with actual organized data. So let's get into this whole topic. Um, we're going to cover F11.1 in this particular video, which is just some basic terminology about databases. So when we're talking about computer databases, we're talking about files, just like, you know, we were talking about files previously in the class, but rather than just talking about text files, now we're talking about files of data that are organized in some way. They are uh, a collection of related information that is describing a whole bunch of things that are all sort of related to each other. Uh, we're usually talking about tables of data, sort of like what you would see in Excel or what you would see with a two-dimensional array. So we're talking about 2D data right here. But yeah, just for when I talk about databases for this class, you know, I will only be referring to tables with rows and columns. Just know that not every database is necessarily a table of you know, rows and columns of data. The columns in a database, like what we are talking about in this class, the columns are known as fields. They are a single item of information that something could have. So if you had a database of student information, um, all students have a student ID. So a field could be their ID. Or all students have a last name and a first name. So the last name could be a field and the first name could be a field. Like a field is just some describer of all things that are in your, uh, in your database. And then a record or a row in the database collects related fields that all describe the same thing. So it forms an instance of the thing that all of the fields happen to describe. So, in the student database I was talking about, a record would be an instance of a student described by all of those fields. And the student's fields would be things like that particular student's ID number, that particular student's last name, and that particular student's first name. And then a table just collects related records. So it could be as broad as a table of students that go to Allen Hancock College, or it could be a lot narrower, like students who are in the College of Business, that's their like primary major, or even uh, students who are in math classes at Allen Hancock. As long as those records are related in some way, we'll collect them into a table and that table will contain all of the records with information on all the students represented by those records. And databases can actually have more than one table where the information between tables is often related. So in the students database I was talking about, maybe we have a database of all the students in Allen Hancock, but we've separated it out where different tables are, uh, you know, the different students uh, separated out by major. So all the students in the College of Business versus all the students in the College of Science and Math and so on and so forth. Each of those could have their own table. You can have Tables that don't really look all that similar to each other contained in the same database, though. You could have a um, table of students, and all the students have a major. So that major, you know, you might need more information about that major. So you make a second table within your database where all of the individual majors have their own table. And they have fields like uh, what college those majors belong to, what classes students have to take in order to graduate with a degree in that major and so on and so forth. So the tables don't necessarily need to be identical to each other, but they should all be related. And in my example that I gave, they're all related because they're all a part of Allen Hancock. Students of Allen Hancock, um, courses that are, or sorry, majors that are offered by Allen Hancock and so on and so forth. Here's another example right here. I have a table of courses for some hypothetical college. Um, and all these courses are just laid out as is. They're not separated out by the college that is offering them or anything like that. And in fact, 
this courses table is for a particular student who has taken all of these courses, as you can see by the grade right here. So um, what we have is uh, this ID, which I'll talk about the ID in just a second, but then the code for the class. And notice that the code isn't necessarily unique because the student happened to have taken, retaken English 101. Uh, they withdrew early on and then retook it later in order to get a better grade. Same with the title and the hours for English 101 right here. But yeah, these are all of the courses right here. Each of these rows represents a particular course with the fields describing what that course happens to be. So this course right here is the course English 101 with the code English 101, the title, English composition, all that kind of stuff. You could even say that this uh, row right here is the row for um, English 101 in whatever semester they happened to take it first versus uh, the second time we see English 101 show up by ID 5 right here. Uh, that record happens to correspond to the uh, particular section of English 101 during the second semester that they tried to take the class. So they're different, they're different sections of the same course, but um, we're not uh, holding on to that section information right here. We're just looking at the code of that course and the code just happens to be the same. And that might be important because for this particular student, we don't really care about which uh, section they actually took those classes in for this table. We just care that they took the class and they passed or something like that. So. Whether or not we want to include the actual section number as well as the uh, course code, um, that would be up to however, you know, whoever is designing this table for whatever purpose. But yeah, that's just an example of what a table might look like. Now, I want to bring your attention up here to this ID code title hours and grade thing right here. Uh, this would just be known as metadata for the table. So metadata for each field provides what that field is describing. So the title or the hours or the code, the metadata kind of names the field in a sense. Um, and it also talks about what type of data is in this particular field. So ID right here would have numbers, code and title would have strings and hours would have numbers and grades would have strings as well. All right, so then we say that the primary key of a table is a field that uniquely identifies each record in a table. And our primary key in this case is the ID uh, key right here, because each course is given a unique ID. Uh, I mentioned before how at ID 2 and ID 5, uh, they're both describing the same course, just different times that the student happened to take the course. Well, if we didn't have this primary key right here, this ID key, we wouldn't be able to tell the difference between uh, the first instance of English 101 and the second instance of English 101. But we do want to be able to tell the difference between the two because we did include um, both instances of the course for a reason, right? Uh, one is the first time the student took it in which they withdrew from the class, and the second is that they um, that they managed to pass it with a B. So we do want to distinguish the two. And yeah, we could distinguish the two by comparing all of the different fields and seeing what differences there are between them. But it's a lot easier for us to have this primary key that we always know will have the difference, you know, like will be unique. You know, if I take any two courses from this table, if I try to compare the code, it's not guaranteed to be unique. If I try to compare the title, it's not guaranteed to be unique. As you can see with the two English 101s right here, neither of those are guaranteed to be unique. The hours are not guaranteed to be unique between any two courses, and the grade is not guaranteed to be unique between any two courses. So without the, without the ID key, we'd have to um, have a lot trickier logic comparing all of the um, different all of the different entries in the table and trying to figure out which one is the correct one that we're trying to look for. And then 
if we have duplicate entries for whatever reason or th that still need to be considered separate records or records for whatever reason or if we change something and it no longer becomes completely unique or easy to tell that it is unique anymore that is a bit of a problem so we always want to have some uh some field right here this primary key that is able to uniquely identify the record every single time that we know is guaranteed to be unique so that we can always go to the right record in the database every single time if we have that id and it's a unique reference that we can pull out of the database in order to reference pieces of that database when we're working with it in code so that's really important um for courses like this it may not be an id that starts at one and then goes up uh one two three four five etc cetera, etc cetera. it could also be um crn numbers uh those course codes that you get that are unique every um semester as well so that could be another candidate for a primary key but that primary key is really important in your database. You always want to have a primary key so that you can uniquely identify every single record in some way that no other record will be able to have access to. Now there's a certain type of database which we will be working pretty much entirely with, which is known as the relational database, which it lets you actually define relationships among rows and tables and what this lets you do is it actually lets you have um, certain fields within your table that then sort of almost give you a direction or like an arrow pointing to another record in another table and that record in the other table can give you more information about that particular field or about that record in general which is really Helpful. For example, if we had a student table that then had a, uh, you know, it had a course field for, you know, some of the courses that they were taking, and that course field could then point to another table that then listed all of the information about that course based on the actual entry of the field that you put into your table. So that's the idea that we're working with with relational databases and all of our databases are going to follow this relational model. They're going to be relational databases. So here's what I mean by a relational database right here. We have two tables. Um, the first table is a uh, has a whole bunch of records of salespeople who work at a particular company. Um, and the second table has a has information about different locations that the people in this company might work from. So in the salesperson table, every record is a person who works for the company. They have, they have a unique ID, they have a first name, a last name, and a country code that represents the country that they work for. Uh, and then inside of the location table, uh, that country code is actually mapped to the particular country. Now, this um, particular example is very similar, so you might not, uh, it might not be clear why we don't just put the country inside of the country code field instead of bothering with this country code field, right? Well, maybe inside of the country code, uh, inside of this country right here, there's there's more information about this particular country, or, you know, this particular location, like the location of the headquarters or the number of people who work there or all that kind of stuff. There might be more fields within this location table that we couldn't necessarily cram into the salesperson table or that it's convenient for us to not include in the salesperson table because we can just reference it from the location table, right? So that's really helpful. That's something really helpful that the, uh, relational model can do is allow us to separate out all of this data between multiple tables right here and then we don't have all of this location data cluttering up the salesperson table especially since there's a lot of salespeople who 
work in the different countries, right? There's going to be a lot of them who have pretty much the same information uh, because they all work for country one or country two or country three. So we might as well just have this smaller table where we don't have all of that repeated data. We're not taking up all of that extra space in our database. And instead, we just keep it inside of this more compact location table right here. And then uh, just use the country code to label what country each salesperson works for. That's actually how the relational model was born is because of um, you know, storage concerns in the old days when storage was a much uh, stricter limit on the size of databases. We had to sort of um, break up our tables and consolidate information like this or even you know, make sure that our table file sizes themselves weren't too large because files might have a limit on how large they could be. So you have to split it up across multiple files or you have to split it up across multiple files that you put on multiple storage devices or something like that. So uh, that all of those benefits were why we started using relational databases back in the day. And now we don't necessarily need to worry as much about those um, you know, with the file sizes or anything like that, if we had anything where we needed to start worrying about that, we'd probably be using different storage methods and different types of databases anyway. Probably would be working with the cloud and not even bothering with relational databases. But the fact that it's just so convenient for us to do this and it keeps our tables very not cluttered like this, it really helps. So you'll see this foreign key right here in the salesperson country code table, the foreign key actually says that the, um, you know, when I'm in the salesperson table, country code is a foreign key because country code is a primary key in the location table. So a foreign key in one table essentially is a primary key in another table. And the foreign key is just going to be some field, but the foreign key sort of forms the beginning of an arrow or the trailhead of a hiking trail or something that results in the primary key of the, uh, you know, the primary key of the other table. So we can follow the foreign key in order to get to the primary key. And the relation itself is what maps a foreign key to the primary key. So it's going to be something that says, hey, if you see the country code field in the salesperson table that starts, or you know, it ha has a value of one, the relation is actually going to guide you to the location table, uh, go to that primary key, the country code field and location table, and then point you to the country code with ID one inside of that particular table. So the, the relation itself is sort of the set of directions or the hiking trail or the um, bus that takes you from the foreign key to the primary key. Um, or even maybe not from the foreign key to the primary key. The foreign key is sort of like a sign that says, hey, the, uh, the bus from here to the location table starts here. And then the relation is the actual bus and then the primary key in the location table is the bus stop that you want to get off on. And then the, we say that the table that contains the foreign key is the child table, and the table that contains the primary key is the parent table. So when we have a relation, it goes from the child table to the parent table. The, um, the actual field uh, in the foreign key in the child table is sort of like the sign that says, hey, the bus uh, can pick you up here and it will take you to the um, primary key. And then the, the relation, the bus actually picks you up and then takes drops you off at the uh, country code. You know, the, the uh, parent table, which is the location, and then the um, the actual country code is the bus stop in the location. All right, and then we have the idea of a database management system, or the DBMS. It is a piece of software that creates and manipulates databases. So 
it allows you to actually create a database to insert new data into a database and then read, modify, or delete existing data from a database. Uh, and then we say that a relational database management system or an RDBMS manipulates specifically relational databases. Some examples are Microsoft SQL Server, um, SQL, we sometimes say as SQL, but uh, that is a uh, actual programming language that allows you to manipulate databases like this. Uh, another example of a DBMS is Microsoft Access. If any of you have taken uh, CBiz 101, you'll have used Microsoft Access. There's also Oracle Database, also known as just Oracle, and then IBM DB2. Now, we'll actually be using Microsoft SQL Server when we are working with da databases, although for this chapter, we're not directly interfacing with the um, Microsoft SQL Server uh, database management system. Rather, we're actually building what's known as a database application using Visual Basic. So we're building tools that will allow us to interface with Microsoft SQL Server. It gives us some tools to help protect the data that we're trying to work with, prevent us from doing anything too crazy with it. And it means we don't actually have to get into the um, absolute horrid details of working with SQL Server at, at this point. Um, so we, we actually are building interfaces to SQL Server, which is really helpful. It means that it, it actually makes it a lot easier for us. We don't have to do so much work in order to get data from a database, uh, store data in a database, you know, modify existing records, create new records, delete records, anything like that. It makes it a lot easier for us to work with. But the underlying thing that's making it happen is Microsoft SQL Server. All right, well, that is an introduction to databases, um, just the terminology that we'll be using throughout the rest of this chapter. Uh, I'm actually going to, from here on out, show you how to work with databases in your own uh, Visual Studio projects.